My DM decided to help our team by joining. Our DM created the character at the beginning of the game, which is fully understandable. The character was a story progressor, essentially. I have no problem with this. A character used to progress a story is fine. My problem is this. He made it so his character has infinite XP. That's not a joke. That's what his character sheet says. Can use any spell at will and has the ability to touch something and kill it, as he has unlimited death touch. He also has roughly 20 large slimes. Every combat that we've had, he decides that he wants to demonstrate his power to us and does something new to just kill whatever enemy we're fighting. A giant king that's basically a Dark Souls type character that he can kill in one turn? No oh, man, that's fun for the players. I honestly didn't expect it to work, is his excuse every time. I want to drop out of this campaign, but I don't want to upset my friend. What do I do? I'm not having fun just sitting there trying to do a fight where I get one turn before whatever we're fighting dies because he can do 50 d10 damage from a single spell. Then his slimes come right after him, doing basically the same thing. I don't know how, but they do. Bring up your issues and hopefully he changes his ways, but if he doesn't, I guess you can grace him with a sorry before, yeah, leaving, because this sounds absolutely unfun. The real question is, what's with the slimes? I mean, we see so many Mary Sue edgelord type characters, but slimes don't really come up much in that category. Three years ago, after meeting a girl through Discord and talking to her for a while, she invited me to play D&D with her friends. So I joined their server and we played a single campaign for two years. It was great, both in terms of combat and roleplay. The people there were pretty friendly and it had a satisfying conclusion. Just so I can stop calling her girl in this post, the group for the second campaign consisted of Artificer, the girl that invited me, also the DM's girlfriend, Fighter joined the group when the first campaign was nearly over, also invited by Artificer, Rogue and Cleric, two chill people that unfortunately were also there, Cleric is myself, and we also have the DM. Starting the second campaign, it was obvious that everyone was much more comfortable role-playing from the very beginning this time, whereas most of the first campaign consisted of Artificer talking to NPCs. While the group was having fun connecting their characters and stories, Artificer played exactly like in the first campaign, interacting with us like she's a Paragon video game protagonist and we are followers whose stories need to be solved by her. That actually worked last time because everyone was much more awkward around each other and her character had the highest charisma. But on this campaign, Fighter and I ended up sharing the position of leaders due to our better charisma and the group no longer left long stretches of silence in the call for Artificer to fill. While everyone was having a blast, Artificer actually started to get quieter and muted herself to talk IRL with the DM. Then, after a session, she sent me a DM on Discord. Out of nowhere, she told me that the reason she liked playing D&D was because she could fulfill her fantasy of leading people and being more competent at things than anyone else. While I was processing that, she also told me that she regretted inviting Fighter because she was purposefully stealing the spotlight. She wasn't. She only made sure to yes and what other people said, and that it was messed up to take the group from Artificer's control. When I asked what she meant, Artificer told me that Fighter controlled the random conversations we had on Discord too often. It just happened that the things she was into aligned more with the rest of the group than Artificer, even though it was the only place where Artificer could openly talk about anything. Fast forward a few weeks, despite making the DM rewrite parts of the world to make her special again, she felt like the game was already ruined, so the DM dropped it while she was cutting ties with Fighter. A few days later, Artificer messaged me saying that while Fighter was banned, she could see that I was just autistic and bad at talking exact words, except she made it sound a little cute, so I was forgiven and could play a third campaign with them. Anyways, Fighter and I still talk to each other, though not as consistently due to losing our shared hobby, and we don't want to go back to it for a while. Also, if you feel a bit clickbaited by the post title, it's just that I had no idea what to name it otherwise. There's no clickbait in the title. That's basically what happened. The tale of DM favoritism toward their special someone is a tale as old as time, and we've told it many times on this channel. I feel like it's a weekly occurrence at this point, and I don't have much new to say on it in this case. However, this story does have a unique element. The reason for the favoritism here, at least the reason that Artificer is hogging the spotlight, she presents it as a change in party dynamic, and that is actually something I can sympathize with, because as a dungeon master, when I was DMing for my players, they were not role-playing a lot, during the beginning of the campaign, so I had to fill in space. As we progressed, though, I was kind of bad at pulling away and giving them the space as they became more confident. It can be difficult, but whether you're a player or a dungeon master, it's important to give people space. 
taking up space when you feel like people are not confident in roleplaying, I think that that is okay. But once they gain that confidence, once they want to start roleplaying themselves, pulling back is not only something you should do, I think it's completely imperative to creating a fun game for everyone. That is something Artificer was clearly unable to do. Combine that with some really messed up comments about this OP's autism, and you have a recipe for disaster. I had a few brief horror story moments in my experience with RPGs, but this is the most extensive, so it will be a very long story. We had a group in which we rotate games and GM roll every campaign, so I played two other campaigns with this group, and they were both really good. This story begins way before the campaign starts. The group is formed by myself, the hippie, a really nice guy that avoids every personal conflict, Mr. Precise, a precise and ordered guy, very gentle, avoids fights but not conflict, and the GM. The GM wants to start a fantasy gritty campaign in the Viking era, Journey to Ragnarok module for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Really cool so far. He played D&D 3.5 before, but never read nor played 5e, but still suggested to play it as a GM. Myself and Mr. Precise, we know 5e, started pointing out some problems that may occur while using D&D to play the gritty campaign he is describing. We suggest he read the manual and rule out some spells or abilities that may automatically solve problems he wants to put into the story. For example, you can create food for all the party with the Goodberry spell. If he wants to play around Hunger, he should modify or ban the spell. GM responds that you can take the spell, but if you do, you will be incarcerated and forced to cast it every day to make food for the people. He asks what characters we want to play. I want to play a druid, Mr. Precise a wizard, and after we create them, he starts to ban some things. The only available race is human. You can only use the class specifically in the Journey to Ragnarok module. You can't use fire as a wizard or other spells he thinks aren't right. He literally says this, so we don't know what he means by right. Wizards can't have a book. Writing doesn't exist in this world. Okay, so myself and Mr. Precise stop modifying our characters at every new rule and ask him to make a full list of what he's banned or what he's modified. He responds that it will be too long to read everything and make a list. Days passed. He hasn't read the manual yet. Mr. Precise still wants to play a wizard, but the GM suggests he can sew runes in his vest instead of having the book. Okay, that's cool. But he will have to find the rune corresponding to the spell to learn them and roll a so skill check, not arcana. If he fails, he can't learn spells until the next level. They start to discuss this thing. Mr. Precise thinks it's unfair, not really into a fight, and after a while, the GM says he can't be the GM because we are too hostile towards him. We just state the Italian saying, clear agreements lead to long friendships, but at least problem is avoided, right? Uh -huh, not so fast. GM changes his mind and brings new home rules to the table, like using swords wears out the edge. I ask if hammers will have the same problem. GM responds that they don't have it because hammers don't exist in the Viking era. He corrects himself right after saying they do exist, but only smiths have them and they're 10 times as expensive as a sword. What? After some more discussion, GM cancels house rules and just says that he can use whatever he wants in the campaign because he is the GM. We don't agree. Of course the GM can create his world and modify the rules before the campaign starts, but especially after all he is saying, we would really like to use clear rules. At this point, the hippie that has participated very little in this discussion makes a long message that says that changing all the rules in this way is too much and repeats to the GM that he should at least read the manual for a start. Mr. Precise adds that changing random things really changes the balance in the game. GM ignores the hippie and says there is no balance, since the GM has all the power and that he is changing everything to make the world more realistic and similar to the Viking Age. We explain what we mean by balance, but he doesn't listen. At this point, he was also mildly insulting us. He said that we are pulmatic, always negative, and talking nonsense. So I make a long post in which I say he is ridiculous for not listening to all his three players. If he wants to GM properly, this is the first thing to do. Other players agree on this. He spits out some other insults and states that he will not be our GM. Well, that's nice. But wait, there's, there's more. Mr. Precise and the GM keep fighting about changing the rules to accommodate the setting. Basically, GM would change everything, while Mr. Precise suggests to change little things, or simply not use a high fantasy game to play in a gritty world. I'm skipping a lot of the nonsense, because this is getting too long. At this point, the GM still has not 
read the manual. So I suggest to change the game or if he doesn't want to, to leave us to the task to remove everything that can break the gritty game he is describing or a desperate move, just remove all magic. It's really bad to remove magic from D&D, &D, but that is what he was describing for days. A gritty world where people fear for hunger and cold. How can we fear for hunger and cold if we can spit out food and fire out of nothing or create magical space with comfortable temperature? So GM finally decided we will play Simbaroom, a D&D like game with low magic, but with a Viking setting. Okay, he finally changed his mind. I read the Simbaroom manual. I don't like it very much, but whatever. GM asks what characters we want to do. Here we go again. Mr. Precise asks if he can play a necromancer, which is a school of magic exactly like the others in the game. GM says he can do it, but if he does it, he is going to be an NPC? We explain that a necromancer is basically a wizard and doesn't have to be evil. The GM responds that the spell sucks because they kill friends. In reality, there is one necromancer spell that targets all living creatures nearby, but he can just use it in the right moment or simply take other spells? GM continues to make home rules and changes things up just like he did for D&D, but you get the idea. I don't want to repeat much, so let's skip to the best parts. After I make my character some sort of paladin, he tries to modify my ability distribution, my power choice, my background, not because it doesn't fit in the setting, he just wants to make my character one-eyed, maybe to resemble Odin, I don't know, even the picture I want to use for my character, and even my name needs to be changed, Gorm, because it wasn't Viking enough. I literally searched Viking names as he suggested and just chose from there. I discuss some things with him, trying to accommodate what he is looking for, but I just refuse to agree to this nonsense. At this point, you may ask, why do you still want to play with a GM like that? Well, this is thrilling me. How will this end? So the campaign starts. When we roleplay between characters, it really is exceptional, but even the parts with the GM are pretty nice. The problem is that in combat, he continuously gives us malice for our actions and tries to defeat us by cheating using narration, he said, but he never killed us. The worst part was that every event occurred in an awful railroad. Whatever you do, the most predictable thing always happens. We played the first sessions using a draw program with the GM sharing his desktop. We switched to roll 20 later, and at some point, he all tabbed and showed us his notes by mistake. It was a graph formed by 9 or 10 hexagonal boxes and arrows, like this. Encounter with NPC, go to the woods. Wolf attack, injures NPC. Return to village, other NPC punishes party for leaving first NPC there. I read only the first boxes, understand what it is, and stopped, but everything I read happened. I lasted five sessions. The last thing was an encounter with an invincible NPC that healed more damage per turn than we could possibly make, in which I just tried to die in an old-fashioned viking way before leaving the campaign. But apparently this wasn't his plan, so I didn't die. So, I write a message for the group telling them that this is not my style of playing, I am not having fun, and so, I'm stopping. The GM insults me one more time, said he should never have accepted me as a player. I was contacted by Mr. Precise in a roleplay website and asked to join the group, but in the meantime, GM kicked me from the chat group before the other players could answer me. The best insult was towards my character, the equivalent of disgusting panatone. Today, I don't even know what this means. My character was basically a noble viking warrior with some heals and divine protections. Other players answer me privately, telling me they understand me, but will continue playing mainly because he is a friend. I mean, I am glad the GM abandoned his ridiculous quest to haphazardly modify 5e into this survival viking setting. I mean, it can work. You can absolutely do that. I mean, we saw 5e get hacked into becoming destiny, and if that can happen, anything can happen. But a proper hack takes years of effort. D and Destiny has a full team behind it working on that game. I mean, it's real development, which this GM is probably not willing to do. I've only been playing D&D or running D&D for four years, so I do sometimes change things mid-campaign because I haven't experienced everything D&D has to offer. In fact, I don't think I'm ever going to experience everything D&D has to offer, and so some stuff is going to have to change mid-campaign, but I don't just do it via executive power of the Dungeon Master. I do it by talking to my players and discussing what we, as a group, want to see change. I don't think the GM understands that either. The campaign itself sounds like your substandard railroad nonsense, wonderful. Why the players want to continue because of friendship, I don't know, but at least this player got out and will hopefully find a better game in the future.
I was recently part of a homebrew MMORPG type game that was run on Discord involving building and piloting mechs aka giant space robots. There were a multitude of classes and you could schedule a mission for a time that works best for you, then gather a crew and have fun. It worked really well since there were 4 or 5 GMs besides the game's creator, so there was always someone who could run your mission at any time. I joined about a year ago and went from level 0 to 15 pretty fast at a time when most of the veteran players were in the mid-20s and was approached by one of the guilds as as an up and comer. Over time, I got to know everyone on the server pretty well and even became friends with many of them. At one point, I was one of the top three most active players and managed to catch up to most of the vets. This is where the problems began. The game's creator, let's call him The Commander, is always in the state of releasing new content and updating the old. The issue was, the next perk I would get was going to be regarding player homes, which weren't out yet. I asked the commander if they would be once I got the perk, and he assured me that they would. I slowed down playing anyway and even asked if he wanted me to start multiclassing to give him more time. He said, no, it will make the game better, trust me. So I got that level and started sending him messages once a week. After a month, I bumped it to twice a week, then it was once a day. During this time, he released two new minigames, two new classes, and multiple new bosses and storylines, and started complaining that I don't know what it's like to be him, and all this stuff is more important to the game than making sure one of the premier classes has a perk that works. Before this, we'd had a pretty good relationship. I had given him enough money to become one of the highest level VIP players, not because I particularly used any of the benefits, but because I enjoyed the game and I wanted to support it. But now it was different because I kept asking for my perk to work and he kept calling me whiny and impossible to make happy. Eventually he came through, but our relationship had changed. He would go between saying he missed me and saying I'm stupid or needy. Despite my better judgment, I got drawn back in until my guild leader, Dionysus, got kicked. Dio was one of the other two most active players and was the most active game master besides Commander. He had also become a good friend of mine and a regular crew member on my missions when he wasn't running them. Other than that, he was friends in real life with the Commander. Dio getting kicked stemmed from a complaint he made in our guild chat about one of the other moderators. Commander saw it and started yelling at him in the DMs. He got axed, then Commander announced that Dio had decided decided to leave the game, while at the same time making it impossible for moderators to see the chat logs, which was the shadiest thing I had seen so far. After this, I stopped playing nearly as much, because if Commander could casually kick out the guy most people thought of as his right-hand man that he was actually friends with, there was nothing stopping him from doing the same to me, and I still had some friends I'd like to talk to. Eventually, I got pulled back into the game by my friends and was enjoying it again. I had as little contact with the Commander as possible and it was working, and then one of my good friends, also got kicked. Samurai, that same friend, was one of the top players, a VIP like myself and also a personal friend of the commander. This is already long enough as is and I didn't want to get into all the issues with the commander that contributed to me leaving, but I just needed a place to vent that was relatively anonymous. TLDR, a guy created a game that alienated most of the top players and wonders why the game is slowly dying. I have no idea what kind of game this is, it's giving me mixed feelings. Either this is a TTRPG with game masters and dungeon masters, or an MMO with VIP systems and tier systems and a game developer. Is it both? I have no idea. Either way, from what I could tell, these VIPs are paying for the experience, and treating them like this, well, that really, really sucks. This game is clearly still in development, there's still stuff being done to it, and yeah, the commander, while they are a game developer and nothing but respect to game developers, they are also the server owner, and that is the problem that I see here, the primary issue. This developer is treating the server like some of the worst Kickstarter MMOs, censoring criticism and kicking people out on a whim, which is especially crappy considering that those same people are paying for the experience. With all that being said, I think the real RPG horror story is the presence of a VIP system in a TTRPG type game. You know, microtransactions in a TTRPG. To each their own, I guess. This is a story about how I, 37 female, was recently blocked and banned from a gaming store group after refusing to entertain flirting by a potential DM, 40 something right now. Background, I have played one TTRPG or another for the past 29 years after my cousin made a Master to the Universe game for me because he could think of no other way to entertain an 8 year old girl. I loved it and have been chasing that high ever since. 
When Cuphead hit and everything locked out, I decided to learn 5th edition, as when I last played D&D, it was still in 3.5. I played with a few friends virtually and decided last month that it was finally safe enough to venture into a local game group and play in person, as I am now vaxxed and boosted. I moved to this new area just in time for the pandemic, and so I know no one and have been nowhere in the last two years of living here. This is a small city, and the local game shop has a player looking for a game pinned post on Facebook. I decided to throw in my lot to see if anyone had availability. Immediately, I get a message from someone, I'll just refer to him as a Dungeon Master, I see pretty active in the Facebook group, inviting me to join his group of players. He and I go back and forth about expectations and playstyle before I notice a friend request from the DM. Before accepting, I do warn him that I'm a mean poster from hell, and I can be a little much should there be a topic I'm passionate about. He should make sure he's ready for a wall of memes before adding me on social media. No hard feelings if he doesn't follow through with the friend request. DM says he adds all his players on Facebook and wants to get to know who will be sitting at his table. Cool, no problem. After about two days, DM has liked every post and picture of me going back five years. He messages me first thing in the morning on his lunch break and before bed. If I don't respond, he gets huffy and makes little snide remarks like, I hope you're more responsive at the table, and I cast true resurrection on this conversation because it died. Keep in mind that I told him I'm happy to get to know one another organically, but I'd rather just stick to the game until I'm feeling more comfortable opening up to some stranger on the internet. I tell him that I'm not the type to message someone first, and that with my job, I am a therapist, there isn't much time during the day to hold a conversation about everything and nothing. He either does not remember or care that I've said this gently many times. The week before a game is supposed to start, the messages become weirder and more personal. He tells me how he starts playing D&D after his second divorce to a dragon of a woman who robbed me blind and has hoarded all of my money and kidnapped my three children, and starts saying things like, I hope your boyfriend doesn't get jealous of how much we talk. I hope your boyfriend doesn't get jealous if I have you all to myself for four hours a week. I tell him that talk makes me uncomfortable and I don't appreciate what he's insinuating, to which he replies, Well, I just want to make sure. Your Facebook says you're single. If you aren't, I don't want some guy trying to beat me up. Yikes. One, who says that? And two, you're assuming I'm into dudes? And if I am, I don't see how it factors into playing either way. I mute him for a few days and then check my messages two days before game. He messaged me 50 times. No lie. There were things about how he likes short girls, how he hopes I dress as my character for the game, I cosplay by the way, how when he has a girlfriend, he can't walk past her without slapping her ass. <sighs> I've never been more disappointed, and my expectations were already on the ground. And then he starts getting angry that I'm not answering him. He claims I'm being disrespectful as a player, and being a terrible friend. The final straw happened to be when he says, I thought you weren't going to be like the other girls. No, just no. I tell him I'm busy and that I don't owe him a conversation in any capacity outside of game. I tell him that I no longer feel comfortable with him and that I'm bowing out of the game. This is where it gets even more annoying. He runs to the Facebook group, tells them I'm an asshole, how I'm leading him on in hopes that I'll get preferential treatment at the table, how inappropriate I am, and how he just wants to be a good DM and friend, but I abused it. Ultimately, just smears my name. Before I can finish typing a reply, I'm banned from the group. I message the store owner and moderator, and he leaves me on red. Part of me wants to go to the shop and tell the owner what a creep this guy is, but the instant banning makes me think that it won't matter even if I do. I am going to try one of the other game shops and hope for a better outcome. So yeah, that's my contribution, for what it's worth. I know that might seem like the end, but it's not. Eyes up, we've got part two. Update. Today, aka like four months ago, I went to the shop and met with the owner. I printed out the entire conversation from the first hello until the end and handed it over. The owner took time to read it through and then apologized for banning me without speaking to me. He removed the ban from the group and let me watch as he messaged DM to tell him they needed to talk on Monday when DM came into the store to host the board game night. The owner told me he was planning on suspending DM from the group and store for a week and asked me if I felt like that was a fair punishment. I told the owner that if you wanted my personal opinion, that the DM was a creep that exhibited extremely disturbing behaviors. I said that the fact that he didn't feel like he did anything wrong and then, when DM thought he might get exposed, ran to the group to insult and lie about me, I then told the owner that a ban might not do anything if DM feels like this is the worst thing that could happen to him. 
The owner asked what he should do because DM runs multiple games and events and has been there since the owner opened the shop. I told him that I don't have an easy answer for him, but that he might be putting others in a similar situation by doing what is essentially nothing. The owner asked that I give him the week that he has suspended DM to figure it out. I told him that was fair, that if he handled it appropriately, I wouldn't post a negative review, but that if he didn't do anything to curb DM's behavior in his group slash store, that I would have no choice but to warn people of a potentially unsafe environment. He said he understood and would let me know when he's made a decision. So that's where it is as of now. Thank you to everyone for your advice. I don't plan on going back to the shop. The post where DM lied about me has been removed from the group. I feel like trying to join another group attached to the store might be a bad idea as they're all friends and might blame me for anything that happens to DM. A friend of mine has invited me to join his virtual group, so that's the plan. For those of you who have messaged me to post a review regardless, I'll think about it. I feel like I've already put a lot of energy into this, and the last thing I want to do is put more energy into the review and any backlash that might come from posting it. I hope you all have an amazing night and that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Thank you again for being a great source of advice. Thank you for your well wishes. Always appreciated in a post. But yeah, I hope that the DM gets more than just a one week suspension because yeah, that's pretty much nothing. He might get a one week break just because a group has scheduling conflicts. So a one week suspension is essentially nothing to a dungeon master of this caliber. I do disagree with the OP here. The best thing the owner can do is ban the DM from the store. I do think that would absolutely do something and take action if the DM tries to return because, you know, that would be trespassing. It doesn't matter how many games the guy runs, if he acts like this towards a potential love interest, then yeah, that's incredibly creepy. Not only is it creepy, but here, let's go from a logistical point of view, it's just bad for the store's reputation. I mean, seriously, you think this is a one-time occurrence? No, this DM is gonna keep on doing this stuff until he gets what he wants, which I don't think he is, because again, he's creepy, and most people aren't into that. Well, at least she found a good game with her friend, and I wish you luck in all of your future D&D game endeavors. And that is where we are going to end today's episode of RPG Horror Stories. If you guys enjoyed it, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of our content, then you can check out our Tabletop Tavern Tips series where we go over advice for both DMs and players, new and old. And while you're there in the card, subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content right as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down into the comments down below. If you cannot think of a comment, leave the comment. Banned for what? to let me know you made it to the end of the video. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.